Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey, it's 2.35 at the College of Alameda on a Friday. We've got a pretty good turnout. It's great. Thank you for coming to the House of Sound. It's okay? Sounds good. Thank you for coming to the meeting on the Chancellor's Working Group. Before we get started with presentation, I want to just introduce our Chancellor, Ellen Harris. Yay. Our Academic Senate President, Carlotta Campbell. Our Chief Financial Officer, Sadiq, I mean, Tom Smith. <laughs> I knew you'd like that, Tom Smith. <laughs> Working out class. <laughs> the guy that's in charge of all the buildings and the maintenance and everything, Sadiq Ikaro, Dr. Sadiq Ikaro. The President of SEIU, Diana Lara. The Vice Chancellor for Ed Services, Wise Allen, Dr. Wise Allen. Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Debbie Budd. Tony Cook, the Director of EOPS. George Herring, the President of the College of Alameda. Maurice Jones, the Dean of Division One, two. Three. Connie uh, Willis, our business manager. And Greg Marl, who's on? I didn't do it. <laughs> he didn't do it. All right, so thank you so much for coming. And uh, there's probably someone in. Oh. Jeanette Jackson, our Vice President Instructor, who was the member of the Chancellor's Working Group. So we're going to get um, information from somebody who was directly involved in this change that we're presenting to you today that we think will be make decision making even smoother and more transparent in the district. Want to go, Jeanette? Sure. I told Sammy. He didn't have to, but one microphone, and you notice there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I, a little bit of overkill, but I told him it's better to have overkill than not at all. Um, when you came in, hopefully you picked up one of the PowerPoint presentations. I also think, okay, Sammy. Um, also, um, Teddy sent one out in email, so if you didn't get a copy, you should have one in email. There is also the planning, integration, and budget model, uh, which is a lot more detailed information regarding the process. We couldn't put all of that in a... PowerPoint, so we actually gave you the document. It talks about a lot of the things that I'll be discussing in the uh, PowerPoint presentation. And then you should have also gotten one sheet, which is two-sided, which talks about the introduction and what we're gonna be covering on the agenda today. And on the back side, it gives you a chance, as we go through the process, to write down anything that you liked, positive or negative and also any questions or recommendations that you may have in case you have to leave early or can't stay for the end of the presentation. Or as we go through the PowerPoint, if you have questions, if you can jot them down and then we'll try to address them at the end. That way I may be covering that question as we go through the process, okay? So Carrie is gonna help me because I roam around a lot, so, and this keeps going on and off, so I'm, I'm I'm having a little bit of a problem because sometimes it goes off and I, I jerk. But basically, the Chancellor's Work Group, this is um, a town hall meeting. Um, it was conducted at all of the campuses, including our college is the last one. Uh, it was done at Merritt and, thank you, a little bit better. It was done at Merritt, it was also done at Laney earlier this week and at BCC on Tuesday. And we wanted to do it on Tuesday, but we had to discuss our planning and budget model, and uh, we talked about that. So we felt that was important, and so we had to move it to this Friday. So I want to thank all of you on a Friday afternoon uh, at 2.30 for coming out. And so we'll try to walk through this, and then at the end, um, both the Chancellor and Carlotta uh, will join me up at the front, and Tom, and we will try to address any questions, and maybe even Debbie Beck. Okay, so a little bit of background. Um, this started as a process even before our accreditation. 
I started with our DWMC process, which is our district-wide educational master planning process. And we met, and there were representatives. It was to streamline the process for developing recommendations, and I won't read through all of these, but that was really our main goal. And the other one was to ensure effective shared governance. So the members that were on that committee included representatives both from classified professionals, um, the Academic Senate, the PFT, and we also had administrators on that team. And then it was to address college requests. Um, it really became apparent when the library wanted to get new software, and they really didn't know what body they should be presenting to. Should it be the SMT? Should it be SPPAC? Um, should it be DWMC? And it really highlighted the need for us to come up with a streamlined process. Next slide. These are the members that were on that committee. As you can see, I highlighted the members from College of Alameda, but it really was a district-wide committee. And we met several hours early in the morning. So we started out early in the morning. We made Debbie Budd buy us breakfast since we felt that we were coming there. And then we worked until about 10 o'clock on several days. So you can just see it was also the other individual that was the administrator uh, was Frank Chung. He was representing the presidents and I was representing both the BPSs SS's, as well as the vice presidents of instruction. Next slide. We had our first meeting on January the 27th. Uh, we then went and briefed the model to SPPAC, and for those of you that don't remember what SPPAC is, it's the Strategic Planning Policy and Advisory Committee. And we're going to talk a little bit about that because that committee in our new design actually goes away and becomes subsumed into the other three committees. We also uh, briefed DWMC, which is a district-wide educational master planning committee. Um, that committee is also going away, but really is being morphed into what we call the education committee. And then we're having the town halls this May. We have a meeting scheduled for next Wednesday where we will take all of the feedback that we got from the town halls and we will discuss it and we will come up with a recommendation that we'll make to the chancellor and then he working with the SMT and the other vice chancellors will make a recommendation and then hopefully this process will begin for a one year trial starting July 1st. These are the members of the SPPAC and I know you can't see all of them but again I kind of highlighted the members from uh, College of Alameda. Um, the faculty representative was the um, Academic Senate President, Carlotta Campbell. We also had classified representative, that was Willard Barksdale, that was when Willard was the uh, President of the Committee, uh, President of the Classified Senate. Um, Dr. Kerry Compton was the Administrative Representative along with Dr. Herring. And we also had some ex officio representatives. We had our college researchers, uh, Deborah Budd, Dr. Deborah Budd, thanks was there, <laughs> get it right. And we had, at that time, our ASCOA um, president, which was Joseph Johnson, was on that committee representing students, and then I was also an ex officio member. On the DWMC, um, the DWMC was composed of, for College of Alameda, the curriculum chair, who was Bob Brill, and Bob will, is happy to tell you that he met, did not miss any meetings. He's probably one of the few people who made every meeting of the district-wide educational master planning committee. It was also the academic senate president, Carlotta Campbell, and it was the two vice presidents of student services, Dr. Compton and myself. We also have included the members on the budget advisory committee because they've also been involved in this and they were also briefed. And again, I highlighted the members from College of Alameda so you can see that and I won't go through their names because a lot of them are the same names that are on some of the other committees. So let me give you a brief overview of what the proposal is. The first thing that we did was we looked at what were some of the guiding principles. And because we wanted to do this from a strategic point of view, looking at a framework. So some of the guiding principles, one, education. Education had to be in the center of planning because education is in everything that we do. Education should drive our planning, it should drive our budgeting, it should drive our facilities. So educational planning was the foundation for decision making. 